we don't just detail boats real quick in one day out the next like it's an art and like artists kind of pick up the paintbrush when they feel like it and when it's you know in there they're in the mood for it and it shows in your work if you don't feel like doing the work welcome back this is simon cromer and today we're going to be recording our first episode of the one percent podcast and today i have matt peralt with me with peralt performance cleaning um, he's a young entrepreneur from Canada, and today we're going to be talking about boat detailing. Um, so thank you, Matt, for being with me here today. Um, so do uh, you got any words to say before we get started? Uh, it's my pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. I'm glad uh, two younger guys like us can get together, even though, uh, you know, the borders are closed and whatnot. We can still educate each other and share some knowledge, and well, there's nothing wrong with always educating yourself. I mean, that's kind of how we learn, and we all have to start from somewhere, so the better we can help each other out. I feel like the more you can grow as a company. Right. Yeah, Matt, I'm honored to be with you here today and I'm really excited for this interview. So, um, so look, so you got established in 2020, right? Um, sure. you know, I guess kind of explain like how you got into detailing, you know, from what I kind of looked at on your Instagram, I kind of saw, you know, you're doing a lot of cars, you're doing boats, kind of just accepting anything that you could just kind of get your feet wet and, and kind of figure it out. So what kind of drove your passion? And then like, kind of your backstory to how you got started. Like, you know, when, when did you get started? Um, you know, how many, how many years ago and, you know, what kind of got you into it? So started uh, kind of February, 2020. I was like talking to my girlfriend and I was like, Hey, I think I want to start a detailing business and I want to detail boats. I had kind of been seeing some things online and I grew up on the St. Lawrence river, uh, like my entire life and we've always owned boats and we've kind of had RVs and taking care of them. And my grandfather showed me a few things before, like how to take care of them and just how to wax them um, with the good old reciprocating circular buffer. Right. And, yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's nothing close <laughs> to what we do now, but I guess the passion's always been there. And I kind of just started, uh, I was like, all right, well, what do I need to start? I was like, I need a uniform. So I just need a shirt. I got a bunch of business cards made up. I got a website done, just the basics of starting a business. Uh, and I had never gone to business school or anything like that, but I was like, well, let's just try this thing and see where it goes. And so I started advertising that I was doing boats and I started like telling people that I was doing cars also, or whatever really came my way. And at first I did, uh, my first ever car was like a Mercedes Benz. And that was the first ever client I had. So I just did this Benz and I posted pictures of it and I advertised it. And next thing you know, there's a family friend who had a boat for me to do. So I did their boat and like, this is awful, man. But I was doing it like <laughs> on a rotary with foam pads and I was using yeah. like McFlyers just <laughs> like, <laughs> Entry level product. yeah, the, like, you know, just not educated. Um, and like, I knew as to what to use. Um, but then I was like, okay my boat and the quality of my work is not what I want it to be. I was like, I have to educate myself. So I called uh, a mutual friend of ours, Drake, quite a few times and uh, just kind of started hitting everyone up. Like that was on Instagram that I could find that was detailing boats in Florida and uh, you know, calling them, emailing them, just getting education on what products they use, what machines they use and like, what steps they use and certain things like that. And so I was getting all this knowledge and I was like, all right, I'm feeling more comfortable. So I went out and bought my first VA. Uh, and then I was like, Oh, okay, well, this is working a lot better. <laughs> and then I used like an actual wool pad on a, on a, a like a, an, an actual machine. And I was like, I went and bought it to Walt and I was like, Oh, okay, well, this is starting to go good. And then my bolts are starting to get better. And then, through experience and trial you just learn what's good and what's not and um a lot of a lot of youtube content i guess and i don't think there's anything wrong in learning from youtube uh because even though you're seeing sometimes professionals do the work and you see these complete amateurs do the work you still learn from both like you learn what to do and what not to do and um, so it kind of just started taking all the jobs and i started working out of like one shop um who kind of offered me a bunch of jobs and I was starting to learn from them, like pretty big jobs too. Like the third or fourth boat I ever did was like this giant 27 foot 
you know, cabin cruiser. And I was like, holy jump. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll do it for this much. And I was like, basically, <laughs> basically working for free at the end of the right. two weeks that I took, like took to complete this thing, but it, it ended up turning out really good. Um, and then like, after that, it was just nonstop. I was getting scheduled all the time for like little odd jobs here and there. And I was doing all of the work out of the one shop and I had a deal with them that like, I paid him a percentage uh, and uh, he kind of like overquoted my job. So say I did like, I told him, yo, this, this job is going to cost $1,500 for me to do. He's like, all right, you give me like 10% of that. And then when he came time to go into the client, he was like, yeah, it's going to charge. It's going to cost $1,800. So he was kind of like double dipping. And I was like, ah, I don't know if I like that. So I started uh, giving out a bunch of business cards and contacting all the marinas, every single marina within like an hour of me. And I was like, Hey, I'm a new detailer. You guys need anyone. I know some, some of you guys have your own in-house detailers, but if there's overflow, give me a shout and I'll see what I can do. And uh, the one shop that I ended up dropping off business cards at um, this year, they called me up and they're like, Hey, our full-time detailer quit. Uh, he got a job out West. He's making good money. He doesn't feel like detailing boats. And I was like, Hey, I'll gladly take over for you guys. And uh, well, since March of this year, the first of March, I've been working nonstop every week. Uh, I still have a full-time job currently at a hospital. So it's insane, yeah. man. About 40 <laughs> hours at the hospital and then 60 hours a week detailing boats. Wow. Yeah. So I do remember you telling me that you, you have your hospital job and then you kind of do this on the side right now. So, I mean, you know, we're both young entrepreneurs. You were established in 2020. I was established in 2019. So we kind of both kind of dove into it. Um, For me, I kind of, you know, I always enjoyed taking care of my car when I was younger. So like, I always yeah. had that passion. Um, And then I just kind of jumped into in it. Boat. Yeah. So then I, you know, I had a boat summer, like a summer washing job and I kind of jumped into it there. And then like since it's just kind of taken off, but, uh, yeah. So, um, that's amazing. Like how you got started and it can be overwhelming. Like you said, one of your first boats was, you know, pretty, I guess, top dollar type of boat. Um, it's funny. Cause like one of our first clients, um, was like a 2020 is like a $2.1 million boat. And like, they're asking us to service it and just kind of crazy. So it can be overwhelming, but, um, I mean, what are your plans kind of like moving forward and, um, like work where, where you kind of want to take the company? Um, like I said, or like you said, you know, you're still kind of small, I'm kind of probably looking to you know, grow your team, grow your company a little bit. Um, and then what, like, what kind of, what part of area of Panda do you service as well? Uh, so I service everywhere from Kingston, Ontario, all the way to Montreal, Quebec. I'm kind of located right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, it's, it's very busy. I've, I've been getting people that, uh, I am mobile, but it's, uh, the deal that I've been able to work out with the shop that I'm at is in a, in, in closed structure. So I'm able to crank out boats a lot faster because I'm not weather dependent. Um, and I've been able to like get people to bring me their boats um, from like an hour and a half away all the way up in Gatineau and stuff like that. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, but moving forward for next year, I'll be dropping down part time to uh, the hospital because unlike you guys, unfortunately, my busy time is now and my quiet time is like, yeah, actual winter months. And you guys, you guys have like yes. in, in indoor heated storage where you can work all winter long, and your jobs are just right. book, book, book. Yep. Um, so I got to kind of like slam them all in during the summer, and then during the winter. Uh, although this year the shop that I'm working at now has offered me one of their bays during the winter, um, and our boats are shrink wrap, so uh, I'd have to like cut the shrink wrap off, mm -hmm. pull the boat, and detail it, and then re shrink wrap it and send it out, which is fine, totally doable. But next year, I'll definitely be hiring someone just to keep up with it because um, I've started pushing a lot more scheduled washes also, which is something that I've seen you do. And you do a lot of those. So kudos to you. And uh, I'm like, OK, well, these guys get their boat detailed and they've paid top dollars for it. Uh, it get, literally leaves showroom quality and they want to keep it that way. And the nice. best maintenance is preventative maintenance. It is. It's a great way. Um. Yeah, and that's kind of what I what I founded the business off of was boat washing. Um, then I found out real real quick that people like detailing as well, so we kind of jumped into that. But yeah, um, we pretty much uh pretty much wash towards the end of, ends of the week, so like Thursday, Fridays, sometimes Saturday yeah. mornings. Um, and yeah, we actually have a crew out today washing. So yeah, it's it's a great summer like seasonal business. 
Um, for you guys, yeah, I mean, we're extremely fortunate here where we can detail all throughout the winter. You know, we have one of the largest indoor facilities, you know, in the state up, up here by me. And then we also have Cedar Point, which is the largest, one of the largest amusement parks in the country. So, um, you know, it is seasonal up here, but like in, we do have that option as well. There's there's so much storage around us in terms of like heated storage that we can actually detail and, and work through. Um, like I said, like that one that one building, it's like, I think it's like 335,000 square feet. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yes. But, um, you know, you could just detail in that building alone all winter long. So, yeah. but it is very competitive, um, very competitive up here. Is that, is that kind of how it is with you in Canada or is it a little bit? It's, it's competitive in the sense that like there's, it, it is competitive, but it's not. Uh, there's uh, two different levels of detailing. There's your one-step wonders, which is what I like to call them. And then yep. there's <laughs> like us who take the time. And I mean, like sometimes weeks amount of time to correct the boat, not just like wash this thing with a pressure washer and like yeah. the whole thing and seal her up. Like that's not at all what we do. Um, so there's like two different qualities of work and uh, more people are leaning toward the better quality services, which is what I've been able to provide for my region. And there's only like a few more guys around here that do it, uh, but not very much. Like they're based like an hour, an hour and a half away. So it has to be like a really big job for them to come down. Yes. And, you know, I feel like a part of it too is just being like all in. Like if you want to be the best, you got to be all in about it. Uh, yeah. you know, I don't know if there's other full-time, you know, marinas up there or or I guess not marinas but full-time detailers because like you said this is pretty seasonal uh but yeah so um you know do you ever feel like giving up because I know like you know through my journey you know it can get hard it can get challenging um there's days where you know it's hard to sleep at night and then you're always kind of focused and making sure everything's perfect do you ever feel that at all <laughs> man I don't think we would be human if we didn't that. <laughs> our job for one, like to be a business owner, there's like, you got to be able to do the job. You got to be able to keep the books right. You got to be able to order all the product, make sure it's in on time. And you also have to be able to sell the job. And like, you think of boats yep. in your sleep for crying out loud when yep. you're laying down in bed at night. You're I like, do. Oh, <laughs> I dream dang, this boat needs this. And maybe I should try this and this pad with this product. And maybe I'm going to start investing in this. And maybe I should create more advertisement in that. And, uh, it's, for sure, man. And definitely the really tough boats, like that needs several rounds of sanding and these great big, like that egg Harbor that you just did. Like when you have to compound that whole thing, it whoops your butt, man. Like, and for me who works 16 hours a day, pretty well every day, when I finish work at 11 o'clock at the hospital and I have to be up at six, cause I'm starting at seven. Ooh, <laughs> you know, it can be, it can be rough. And there's days I'm yeah. like, dude, I, I don't even want to do this. Um, and I feel like if your heart's not in it, take a day off. Cause we, we don't just detail boats real quick in one day out the next, like it's an art and like artists kind of pick up the paintbrush when they feel like it. And when it's, you know, in there, they're in the mood for it and it shows in your work. If you don't feel like doing the work you're polishing say on, on your DA or on your flex, it's just, it's not going to be the same as if you're in the mood and you got your headphones on and you're just nice and smooth and slow and steady. And like, you're, you're leaving no holograms behind all the swirl marks are gone. It just shows, man, it shows. And so it's important to take yeah. these off. It's, I know. Yeah, I, I do agree. It's, it's important to have that kind of balance, uh, you know, instead of, you know, sometimes I'll find myself working seven days a week, but it is important to take time for yourself. Cause you know, this is the kind of industry where you have to be at your best every day. Uh, you know, yeah. you can't slack off. You can't be like today. I'm not going to pay attention to detail because, you know, when you slip up, that's when things start happening. So very detailed, you know, you can't, you got to be careful when you're buffing around certain things and you can break stuff easily. Uh, you know, when I first, first started, I was breaking things, but you know, now I pretty much don't, but you know, it all comes into detail and attention and, and being careful with the pads. But another thing too, you know, we're, we're probably about 10 minutes in and I, I feel like, um, just kind of for all our audience, uh, you know, I don't feel like everyone, you know, if you're a boat owner or maybe even a detailer, or one of those one step wonder type people, I guess, so to call it, uh, you know, what actually is involved? Like, could you explain like what's actually involved in like an actual like restoration? Because I feel like sometimes people just think, yeah. you know, is oh, one day, two days and, and it's good to go. You know, you, you compound it, wax it and, and it's done, but it's not always like that. So 
if you could touch on like kind of kind of the process and and just you know how much actually involved into that like I think the first thing for me is always like the first call I make whenever I have a full restoration is my decal guy and that's something that I feel like not a lot of people talk about uh, if you're going to do a full restoration and there's pinstriping on that boat or there's lettering on that boat or there's numbers like registration numbers uh, and most of them are all pitted and chipped away and kind of like gross looking. That's one of the first calls you need to make, because whenever you give out that first initial estimate, you need to have your contact there to take a look at the boat and be like, all right, this is how much it's going to cost the owner to redo the stripes. Uh, I feel like if you're going to detail a sports car of some sort and like repaint it why would you go and slap the old logos back on it you just don't do that and so like i start off with my decals get my decal guy to come over give me a good estimate uh and then i tell that to the the owner along with my estimate and so first step take those old decals off man because you don't want to be wet sanding around stuff and start nicking stuff and compound it and next thing you know you've smudged the letters and it's all then it comes out of your pocket because you didn't include it in a quote so first step decals second step tape that thing up man tape that sucker up because like the rubber trim around the windows most of the time like learning from experience when i was new i totally didn't do it (laughs) if you compound around that you can barely get it clean man doesn't matter how many psi your pressure washer is what degreaser you're using you're gonna stain it it's really true. Tape that sucker up. Same thing if you're uh, if you're wet sanding near a window, tape that window up, man. You don't want to be scratching uh, glass. Uh, tape that thing up, and then make. Don't be afraid of wet sanding. I was so hesitant on wet sanding when I first started, and this is going out to all you one hit wonders out there. Learn how to wet sand. It will change your game, and it will improve. But it's it's not even comparable. Like, really, it's not comparable. Well, it is actually extremely comparable. You can tell something that's been wet sanded and something that hasn't been. But, like, in the quality of your work, it's insane. So learn how to wet sand and learn the grids. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so, like my area of the boats that I do, they're really neglected. Uh, not very often do people actually tell other people to wet sand their boats. Um, so learn how to wet sand. Get those grids down pat. Get you a good DA that you can trust that won't short circuit on you in the middle of a job while you're out in nowhere and uh, then learn how to compound, but learn how to compound like properly. So like, instead of just like, uh, I don't know, sometimes I'll see something on the internet and I know I send you memes all the time of these guys and they're like doing circles <laughs> and they're getting, like throwing around. Right. But, like, going, going four yeah. times speed back and forth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, uh, and no compound on that boat. I'm not saying like use all the compound you got on one little four right. by four spot or something, but you know, like use proper technique and speeds. And uh, really I always nice. started off like thousand RPMs for my up down side to side, and then for my last up down, bump that sucker up to 1400, and really use that diminishing abrasive, which I guess is the second thing to cover. I don't even know where we're at anymore, but like learn your compounds, learn your polishes learn how they work and like how heat affects them is where I am. I can't work if it's not at least 10 degrees Celsius. And like, if it's below that polish just doesn't work, man. It doesn't work at all. Compound doesn't work the same. The heat doesn't get to it. It doesn't gloss out. It doesn't cut right or, or it can cut too much. So learn that. And then like the polishing, I, I'm a big fan of Menzerna 400. So it is a diminishing abrasive. It's not super abrasive, but it finishes out like an insane polish, man. Insane, insane. Uh, I know Stark makes uh, Elevate as well. Um, and I do have some of their stuff and I haven't really tried it. I'm waiting on a boat that's not too, too heavily oxidized to the point where like I can just get away with a good polish and a wax, something that's like, well, not oxidized at all, really. I just okay. want to remove a little bit of holograms and that's it. And I'm thinking of using that. But then sealants, 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 sealants. Get away from that wax, you one hit wonder boys. <laughs> Just- I, wax is pretty much, in my opinion, I don't, I don't even use wax anymore. It's outdated. No. There's no, no reason to. So, I mean, you're getting the same, you're getting good work time, you know, it's easy application. I don't find, you know, reason. And, and the price is pretty reasonable too. So, you know, yeah. wax is just, it's, it's kind of a thing of a past. It just doesn't last anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's, 
as we get more advanced in our technology, we develop better pads and we develop mm -hmm. better products that are suitable for our stuff. And like Stark has actually engineered their products to be specific gel coat, like intended for gel coat, yeah. I should say, sorry. And like, that's, that's what you want, man. That's the good stuff. That's, you know, they're not using car products, which there's nothing wrong with using some car products on both. But if you can use something that's specifically engineered for gel coat, why, why beat around the bush? I agree. Yeah. So yeah, I think that kind of helped a lot. You know, I feel like some people don't understand everything that goes into it and it's so, such yeah. detailed work. I mean, it's like you said, it's more of an art. I mean, it's, it's a science, it's an art. And I think I really enjoy it. Cause like you can never really master it. every, every single boat, you know, is different. You learn more on every single boat, every single car you do, it just kind of keeps you growing and, and it keeps you learning. So that's why I love it. Uh, and you know, it's physically challenging as well. Um, and then you talk about that and you talk about the, the pads are so important. The machines, you know, you go from a rotary to a forced action to an orbital dual action. You know, you have all these machines. And I think sometimes people might get caught up in exactly what to use. Cause you know, if you're a boat owner, you might only be doing your boat once, a, once a year. So you really don't get that chance to kind of experience everything. But then if you're also a detailer, you know, just important to just try stuff and learn. Like, you know, I learned the most in my opinion, through just trial and error, trying different paths because you know you, you go on youtube you watch somebody and, and they might say this works best and you know maybe you don't think it does and you think you can find a better way i um, mean everybody details a little different you know i have a lot of different mentors so to speak and that's been a big part of me growing is like just some of the best people i've you know ever dreamed of having come into my life just you know an incredible car detailer one of the best in the in the country um you know a great you know my start guy is amazing he knows a lot knows a lot about um all the products so I feel like that's really important, kind of growing your connection to, you know, watching YouTube and, and but be selective on YouTube because there, there's good information and bad information. But yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think you touched on it, um, kind of like the whole process. So I'm really glad I hope people can learn something and take something away from that. Um, but yeah, so I guess I kind of wanted to talk about maybe like a little bit about marketing or, you know, since you're still kind of rel relatively new to the industry and so am I, um, maybe like how you book jobs and how you advertise, uh, you said business cards, right? Um, do you do any yeah. advertisement on social media? Do you kind of get with the owners of the marinas and talk to them? Just kind of explain. Yeah. Is it challenging? Like, do you find trouble booking jobs? Do you have trouble? So I guess if you could kind of explain that. At first, I probably had trouble booking jobs. I can specifically remember like a month where it was just like a dead month. I just had nothing going on. But um, for sure, like social media is, is the way to go. Um you know, like I, from the people that I had talked to, like you want something local. Uh, so like radio ads are pretty expensive. They're like $1,500 for a week and I'm sure it'll get you great revenue. Um, but I go with something a little more uh, low key, like uh, Facebook marketplace. And uh, like I advertise on Facebook and I pay for um, sponsored ads. And so this year, I had like, I knew it was going to be a busier year. And uh, so I only cranked out, I think three advertisements that I paid for and I paid for them to run for a couple months. And it was just a picture of like a boat that I've done and explained to them what the packages are and like how oxidation removal works. And you put your email and you put your phone number there and people start calling you. And then once you start doing that word of mouth, word of mouth is insane how like someone sees yes. their boat they're like oh my god how does it look so good and how does it stay looking so good they switch contact info and the marine is like that's another part like and, and being a business owner is you got to keep your contacts fresh and like you got you have to talk with them so like talk to the boys at the shop stop by and even if it's like uh, just stopping by to shoot the breeze with them for 15 minutes and that's fine you keep that relationship fresh and you keep you in the back of their minds so that say they see a boat that's heavily oxidated and they're like, Hey, I have a detailer. Like you want to, or not specifically like working out of that shop, but like I have a guy who details, here's his business card, give him a call, you know, and I give out free estimates and free quotes and it's definitely worth it. How about you? How do you go about it? Yeah, I, I do free estimates, free quotes. Um, and also, I think you mentioned a great point about word of mouth. I think word of mouth is the best business you can get because like people have full trust in you. You know, they're not going to heavily negotiate, you know, on your quality or, or your price because 
they're already yeah. trusted by a friend. So, I mean, word of mouth is amazing. That's, that's for sure the best way. But um, I feel like when you're first starting, you, you have to kind of get out there. And, and I do a lot of Facebook marketing, Instagram. Sometimes in the winters, I run like a paid ad or something. But um, yeah, and then flyers. Like when I first started, I was doing flyers in like strict boating communities, door to door. I was doing door to door. Got that my- thing, that's nice. awesome. I mean, that's, it is. It's, it's not, you know, comfortable doing that, but it's, it pushes you to go out there and kind of get some clients. Um, yeah, I really enjoy Facebook. Like it's, it's free advertisement. Um, you know, and then I make it a way where like, Hey, you can find my website. And I feel like sometimes people don't talk about a website, but I think it's super important. And I put so much time and energy on my website. I mean, every single month I'm analyzing it, figuring out how I can update and make it better. So, um, you know, I see you have your website too, and it's put together very well. Um, and it makes it simple. So, you know, I think simplicity is also better as well in terms of a website. And then I have a spot where they can fill out a quote. You know, and I have all the packages I offer. You know, we have our entry level sealant package and then we have two ceramic packages. So, like I said, I don't even offer wax as a package. I mean, and I haven't been for a while now. So, um, you know, we pretty much tailor towards the high high end detailing market. Uh, But, yeah, I mean, it is like up here. It's super competitive. So you have to get out. You can't be quiet. You can't hide back. Um, You got to put yourself out there. And then, you know, the some of the best things you can do is, yeah, talking to boat owners or marinas, like the owners of the marinas, talk yeah. to them because they'll, they'll hand out cards. I have some marinas that, you know, constantly yeah. give out my card. So it's really nice. And then, you know, just on being on Facebook, too. And then YouTube, I get I get quotes um, from YouTube and I've got quotes from TikTok. So I've actually booked my first job off of TikTok. <laughs> this, this coming up week will be the, that job. So it's kind of cool. Like I'm just on every platform. What um, kind of content week. do you post? on tiktok so tiktok i do like you know it's that's more of a short video type content so i just give quick little tips um youtube i'll go kind of you know do full jobs kind of really go into depth so like you want to utilize every platform a little differently facebook's more like that family oriented type platform yeah. you know instagrams maybe a little showcase like showcase a little more stuff but uh um yeah tiktok's like good for short little tips or like how you do something or you know, talk, talk a quick little video. And then you got YouTube, of course, where you can go into depth podcast, you can go into depth. Um, so yeah, just utilize all the platforms. It's just incredible. Like, I don't feel like you can beat that, but that's kind of what I do. And that's kind of my approach. Um, and yeah, I just think like too, like having, having values, like, you know, I really took it seriously and like try to figure out what do I want the values of my company to be? Cause I feel like people value that. And, uh, you know, if I'm trying to hire someone, they, they need to know the values of the company and kind of what we're doing and what we're headed towards. So kind of just building like a brand, like kind of brand, building my brand up, um, I've been really focusing on. That's so do awesome. you, have some, you have any thoughts there? You know, I know you have your website. If you want to touch on that or, you know, I think so, it's, you have definitely had a great start. Yeah, I, I wrote down something here. And it's funny you mentioned my website and we're talking about it because the one question I was going to ask you is like, where do you find your lacking? And for myself, for sure it is i find it's my website like for instagram and for posting pictures of boats that i've completed like you're working 100 hours a week dang dude it is so hard to i i find it hard and it's a discipline thing but i need to discipline myself more and finding the time to post more pictures and update my website more frequently there must be like i don't know man 15 boats that i've detailed in full restorations that I haven't posted on my website yet. And I haven't updated it in a few months. Like that's, I feel like that's the one part where like, I feel like I'm really lacking is updating that. And, you know, just yesterday I got a, a, an update from Google. That's, this is probably one of the best pro tips is register your business with Google. Get that out there. People use Google for everything. So if they Google a boat detailer around here, boom, this pops up first for our area. And, uh, like just the other day, I had almost 300 people visit my website in just a week. So like it pays to have a good website and like you have to in today's society, in today's day and age, like it's a must to have a website. Everyone Googles everything. And if your name doesn't pop up on Google, I feel like that's a disservice to yourself. It is. Um, um, and I, I put so much effort into, you know, I'm not going to say like I have the best website, but I put so much effort in trying to have the best website for both services. So, you know, I put so much time and energy into that. And yeah. So you're talking about like things that I'm lacking in. Um, yeah. yeah. We could talk about like in general. Um, 
I feel like I struggle a little bit with like delegation, maybe like um I kind of like to be at every job, be here, be there. <laughs> I need to just kind of you know transfer my trust over to my team because I, I do have a, a good team and they've been with me all for two years. So I kind of done that with the boat washing, but in the detailing, like I know that's going to be necessary for me to, to continue to grow, grow and expand my company. Um, I feel like I do a, a pretty good job on social media. Like I'm always posting, you know, oh, something sure. and, all yeah. stuff. So I, and sometimes I probably take it a little too far. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had, I, I went on a 14 day challenge where I've just been knocking out YouTube videos day after day. So I think this is day number 10 now. Um, so yeah, I, I really try to put my stuff out there and, uh, but yeah, I would say that's where I'm lacking. And then maybe like organization, I could probably get a little bit better. Um, I, I run pretty good on inventory, but like, there's so much Like you, you said that you got all these compounds, you got pads, you got everything. You just got to make sure everything's in line, make sure yeah. you have everything for all the jobs. So yeah, just, just a little bit of, you know, everyone has strengths, everyone has weaknesses and, uh, you know, you either focus on your strengths or you hire out your weaknesses or something, you got to figure it out. But yeah, it's hard because like we're playing multiple role, roles as a, you know, small business owner, you know, we're, we're being the manager, the CEO, the social media expert, you know, booking the job, yeah. the job, like pretty much every aspect of the game. So yeah, it is tough, but, uh, but yeah, I think as you, as you kind of grow, you're able to, you know, as you generate more revenue, you're able to kind of hire some things out, things out and make it simpler or, you know, just find strategies that make it easier. So yep. yeah, but uh, yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, you kind of doing, I just want to talk a little bit, kind of shift direction. Uh, yeah. You know, so do you find it, about products again like do you find like entry-level products versus professional grade products do you find them to be a big difference like do you think it's oh, important because yeah. you can go to walmart you can buy mcguire's you can buy yes. you know yes. anything like that and then or arm raw which which i hate but you go <laughs> buy products or you can go you know find a professional grade product maybe such as stark or even nowadays you know if you're a if you're a detail that's been in the game for a while you can get certified for special products and things of that sort you know kind of touch on that what, what are your thoughts on that um trying to find something to compare it to like you wouldn't uh you wouldn't have a race car like a high-end race car and go put like dollar store parts on it like you know what i mean and it's the same thing and like it it pays you know like i think that's one thing that maybe new business owners i could give a pro tip for is like you have to spend it to get it back like what you put into your company it will give back to you you just have to have faith and spend the extra money on better quality products that work for you and they help you they genuinely help you you know what i mean like you compare i was using pressa a lot a lot mm -hmm. and i've totally switched over to stark um and i feel like sometimes i'll use Presta, if I need to like really cut in there, because I feel like it is a little bit more yeah. of a cutting agent than Stark. Uh, but like the amount of shine and gloss and cut that you still get from Stark Level R is insane. I would have had to do Presta and then like at least one round of polish to be able to get that high shine out of there. And then like just good quality products. Like when I first started, I had like a Simmons rotary and God, man, it was awful. It was awful. And then like now I, I, I think you use pretty well, just DeWalt as well. I think you have a few of everything, but like, it's my main, it's my main thing that I can count on is that DeWalt and like you bump those speeds up and you get that shine out of there uh, just spend the money, you know, like, and it's kind of hard for new business owners. Cause I feel like they want to just hold everything and hold all that money in. And I'm pretty fortunate to like have a best friend, who also owns a business as a landscaper. And I see him having to dish out these high ticket items, but I also see how much it helps him out. And I'm like, I try and take away from that and gain a little bit of that knowledge. And yeah, you got to spend it, man. You got to use the higher quality stuff. Now I'm not saying that just because it has a high price, it's the better quality stuff. You know, you, you look at chemical guys and stuff like that. Some of their prices yeah. are not the best. Like, uh, outrageous they definitely work good for like a week, but then you go to some other quality products. Like for my interior, like UV ray protectant, three hundred three Aerospec, the best. I find it lasts. It actually protects. Does it give you the highest gloss, the highest like shine factor? Absolutely not but you can follow up with other steps after that to make sure that it's glossy. You know, you want that protection 
you don't want to be like, Hey, I've protected all your seats after I just used degreaser on them. And then next year, all their seats are cracked because you've just dried them out with degreaser and put zero protectant or a very low quality protectant. Like, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm wrong. Armor all attracts dirt, it you know shines up for a week and then that's it. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Uh, it's funny because my car detailer, she she said n- never use armor all, so I just kind of <laughs> learned that from her. But it was funny because I was talking to some guy yesterday, another detailer, and I don't know, kind of threw me off, and I was really thinking about it as I was driving home. He said, you know, and, and I, he was kind of he didn't understand that you could actually make because you know he's like, oh, your boat will only last for like a month, and then it's it's you know the finish is gone. So he's like. He's like, he's like, well, he's like, at least it was shiny when I got paid. And I was kind of thinking like, that's kind of the wrong way to look at it. Like, you know, yeah. not the well, point it goes of back detail. to what you were saying on standards. I that's you said that. what you want to represent for standards and values of your company. You know, like I don't want to be getting called like, like a mechanic. If you get your car to a shop and he fixes it, do you really want to have to call him in a few weeks and be like, dang, dude, you didn't even fix anything. What's going on with this? Same thing with boat detailing each for sure. Your one hit wonders can make it shine friggin' right they can make it shine but will it last no and that's where the quality of product comes into play and the steps and everything we've been talking about yeah and you will notice a good detailer from a bad one you know over time you know we don't you know now now i don't even offer anything and, and i really value this a lot like i don't offer any um sealants or anything that lasts less than a season like when when i say season i mean like five six months you know because yeah. i just feel like you know you should you, why do, why do I want to have to come out back at your boat midway through the season and redo it again? Um, not only is that costing you money, but, you know, it's costing me the fact that I can't serve more people, more clients and help more boaters. So that's kind of how I look at that. And, you know, ceramic coating options nowadays are also amazing. Um, yep. You know, if, if you're able and advanced enough to do that. And, and I do feel like it kind of goes along with your level of uh, experience because, you know, and that's probably why you got to be certified and you have to, you know, be in the industry for a few years because, you know, you can put these products on your car, but if you're not getting rid of or your boat, but if you're not getting rid of all the oxidation, you know, they're not lasting. So then I feel like what happens is that kind of puts the company's reputation kind of, you know, out yeah. of line because you have random, you know, you have boat owners and you have just general detailers using these products. So it kind of all goes together. And, you know, that's why, you know, we all started off using wax. I'm sure I started off using wax. I'm sure. You did kind of, kind of grow and learn and, yeah, it's amazing. But uh, yeah, definitely, you know, entry level products is like I can I can go to the store and I can buy Meguiar's. Uh, yeah, the products will work. Like I, I believe if you're a good detailer, you can work with any product, but it's just you're not going to be you're not going to have the it's going to cost you more steps, more time, more energy. It's not it's not making it easier for you as a detailer. And, and that's what we're all all about, you know, because it's already hard, physical, challenging work. So, um, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And then just the last thing, you know, you're not going to get long protection of a Maguire spray quick wax, you know, it's going to last yeah. a week. I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. But yeah. So yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Um, yeah. So like, you know, you do cars and boats. I feel like sometimes people are jumping from cars to boats. Like, would you say one's easier? One's better? What, which oh, one's more challenging? Like where should you start to learn from? Cause you know, I guess my opinion would be boats are, you know, you deal with oxidation in boats, whereas cars, you kind of just deal with like, correction work like scratches yeah. whereas boats you deal with both you know first you have to get out the oxidation then you got to remove the scratches with like you know you're right manzerna 400 i mean talk about scratch removal you can't beat a product like that unbelievable unmatched so yeah oh yeah what are your thoughts there um, um anyone who's ever detailed the boat knows that there is compartments and hatches and little areas in boats coming out the wazoo <laughs> like you think you've done all the compartments and then you take another hard look and then you're like dang man i didn't even see this one or you lift the seat and you're like i didn't even know the seat lifted this way and then you got a whole other compartment <laughs> a car it is crazy take, yeah a car take the seats out you got the glove compartment you got the glove box the center console maybe something in the trunk golden pretty well you've reached all the areas you know like do your floor and work your way up or whatever and like a boat is so much more challenging and i don't know about you but i genuinely like doing the insides of boats like big boats that have big cutties and several different like rooms and areas and like a head and a a galley and stuff like that like i genuinely like that because uh well for one they're better paying jobs and uh i 
I love, love, love correcting an entire boat on the outside and then going inside and being like, dang, dude, this thing is literally like the day it came out of the showroom, if not better, because I know I did it. And I know that I took care of all of these holograms and scratch marks and everything that's out of there. And it is perfect. Like yeah. that's to me, that's where it's at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do agree with that. I feel like, you know, like we were saying cars, you know, you don't have as much like when, when I was first starting to quote boats, I mean, it's almost overwhelming the amount of hatches you are like, okay, this opens up, that opens up, <laughs> you know, and then not only do you have to deal with the, you know, fiberglass, you got to look at non-skid. Um, so yeah, let's talk about non-skid for a minute. I mean, right. I feel like a lot of people struggle you know, whether you're a boat owner or even a detailer. And, you know, I've talked to detailers where they just simply have get given up on, on non-skid. And, you know, I feel like, you know, you got to put in the work to make it right. Uh, it's unbelievable. Some of the people I talk to, but I mean, I feel like people just, they given up on the non-skid. They're, they're just not willing to put in that work to, to make it right. Cause yeah, you know, you know, I've started using, uh, you know, you got different types of non-skid, you got spray on, you got diamond, pattern non-skid and, and i found like that purple foamed wool pad to be incredible for that spray on type of non-skid because number one it's not going to level it off because if you use a wool pad i mean you're you're, you're kind of leveling off that non-skid and you're making it yeah man. you're taking you're taking that off so you, know, you got that purple foamed wool pad you get a little bit of effects from wool and foam allow and also allows it to actually get into all the grooves so i mean unbelievable the the, the kind of you know experience i've had with that so far so i really enjoyed that and then the diamond, you know, is a little bit more challenging. I usually run like a, a wool pad on its side yeah. and then I'll come back with the purple foam wool, but that's kind of my process for doing that. But what are your thoughts on non-skid? Like, you know, do you, um, think you should protect it. Do you think a sealant's worth it? You know, do you think you should spray it, coat it? What's kind of your thoughts there? Well, I think I want to start off with for the guys out there that just strictly stray away from it it's probably because you didn't take the time to think of how much work it was going to be and give the guy a proper estimate. If you're getting paid for it, you're getting paid for it. Do the work. You know what I mean? Like you should be doing that work. You don't see it. You don't like detail a car or detail a whole boat and just forget to do the swim platform in the back. Like what? You don't do that. Uh, so I feel like take the time and do it. Like if you're going to do something and that goes back to the values of the company, you know what I mean? Like, no stone left unturned and absolutely wool pad on its side for thicker, like big, thicker diamond grit patterns on its side. I find it gobbles away at the compound. Like you got to use like tons of compound. Yes, I, I go through bottles. It's crazy. Bottle everywhere. And I always use gloves, smear it all in to make sure it's everywhere in the diamond grit. And then I go over it with the pad yep. um, and people out there rinse your pads take care of those pads let them do the work for you so you're not having to force yourself um but for sure and actually i hit you up on uh, on youtube uh, as to like what you your best way to doing it and i completely agreed with you and i think right now that purple wool pad is like one of the hottest topics online right now that's coming out from yes, i hear Lake that Hunter. everyone's talking about it and uh, i haven't had my hands on it yet i ordered a few they're coming in um, and I feel like it'll be great because that, like I've done it before. I'm not even going to lie on a boat where it was like the swim grid in the back. Mind you, this boat was like an eighties. Uh, it totally needed wet sanding, man. There's no way that compounding was going to get rid of all this. So I wet sanded it. And after I wet sanded it, I was like, dang, it's not as grippy as I thought it would be. And I was like, shoot, what am I going to do with this? And I told the owner, I was like, Hey, listen, this is what happened. I think we should just put grip tape. You know what I mean? And the boat kind of needed, it was a very rough boat mm -hmm. and the, like it was very in and out, but regardless, uh, I learned from my lesson. I'm like, okay, well, we can't be super aggressive on that. And I feel like people are afraid to talk about like the mistakes that they've made, but it's important to like self-reflect on those and be like, okay, I can't let that happen anymore. And you need to make those mistakes to learn. Otherwise you're never going to learn. Um, yeah, I agree. Yep. I've sanded through gel coat before, so I know what that's like. I know how much you, you know, you can kind of do with that. So yeah, you know, it costs 500 bucks to repair something like that, but you know, nothing, as long as you're making small mistakes, you know, they're good. Cause like, you know, yeah. when he makes a mistake. I, I don't, you know, I actually, 
it's sometimes it's kind of maybe be bad, but I'm like, Hey, I'm glad you made this mistake. So now you can learn from it. And like, it's not going to happen again. Cause like when I yep. first started, that's exactly what I had to do to learn. And now it's just, I simply don't make those mistakes anymore. So it's just, it is, it's important just to kind of either learn from other people or learn from yourself, just to kind of see what, what it's about. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, yeah, you don't want to destroy a whole boat and, you know, have to pay thousands of dollars, but you know, it could happen, but yeah. Um, are there any like, uh, you know, as a new, newer business owner, I guess, are there any myths you want to debunk or any, any detailing, like anything out there that people, uh, you know, believe that you think is not really true? You know, if you yeah something, I don't know if you I have think, anything. Yeah. One last thing, cause I will have to go shortly, unfortunately to go to my other yep. job, but, um, I think a lot of people are afraid. I have friends who went to college and university and got business degrees and like went to university for four years for business and are at home right now. And they're like, Oh, I want to start a business in this. I want to start a business in this. I want to do this. I want to do that. Do you think this would be a good idea? And then here's good old me who went to school for police foundations and now I'm detailing boats. And uh, I'm like, dude, you just got to go for it. What is the worst that happens in one year of trying to run your own business? You will learn more than the entire four years that you went to university, I promise you. I you did. will learn how to run the books. You will learn how to sell something. You will learn a new skill, detailing, marketing, whatever it is that you're selling. You have to know this product. You have to know how it's made. You have to know who makes it, like how it's made and the quality it is and everything else. And like, you just learn so much. So like, just go for it, man. Go for it. I'm not saying go out there and mess up someone's boat. That's not at all what I'm saying, but go out there, just try and know your worth. Don't sell yourself short. Um, I know a guy here in town who details cars, like he hand washes them, but he'll detail the inside and everything. And then my guy, I'm not even lying. He charges 50 to $60 a car. I'm like, what? And he, <laughs> he takes like three hours to wash these things. I'm like, well, what? what are you doing? Like at the end of the day, you might as well go work at McDonald's. I know you're passionate, yeah. but yeah. know what you're worth and set a price. Don't make it ridiculous. And yep. as your, as our art skills get better in the sense that we perfect things and we perfect the correction of the paint, you can up your prices for what you're truly worth because the quality of your work is totally different. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think this is a pretty good note to end on. I want to just ask you, you know, you, you pretty much touch on it, but like some advice for like someone looking to start a business, um, a detailing, yeah. business. you said, just kind of jump in, you know, try it. Like, you know, a lot of businesses fail within the first three to five years. Cause I don't feel like they're fully committed. Um, so just being all in about it is, is so important. Um, and yeah, go, go ahead and touch on that real quick for any of our audience listening today. Go for it. Don't feel like you have to buy all the highest and latest and greatest. Don't go out spending a fortune. Just start, do your first job. And then you'll see like, oh, dang, dude, I, I think I could really use this. And it would help me a lot to like make things better. Uh, it would help me a lot if I bought this instead. Um, so kind of do a job, just take a job on. And you know what? You are going to learn pretty quick as to what you need and don't need. Um, and uh, I don't know, like market yourself, sell yourself, you know, keep your confidence high. And, you know, like for guys like us who have business coming in nonstop, uh, at the end of the day, it's an art. So don't burn yourself out. And when you feel like you need time off, take the time off because the quality of work won't be there and it takes forever to build a reputation and it only takes one job to ruin it. So really take the time and get refreshed, get your mind right, get your body right. If you're sore, if you're aching, you're tired, whatever it is, if you need the time off, the paycheck can wait one day. The client can wait one day. If the boat's out of the water, it's out of the water. What's one day for yourself for him to have a better quality job? And that's probably, man. You, do you have anything else you could add on that? Um, no, I just agree with you. I think you, know, you got to go for it. Like you can't be scared. Don't be fearful of, of, you know, taking action and trying something, you know, you don't have to go out there. You don't have to buy all, you know, buy this, buy that. Um, you know, you just kind of buy as you go. That was kind of my philosophy, like buy things as you need them. You know, I did, I started with a cheap buffer from Harbor Freight. I mean, just yeah. kind of started and, you know, go out, make it happen. And, 
you know, good things will happen to people who try. So, yeah, I think this is a good note to end here today. Um, look, it was an amazing uh, interview with you. Um, and yeah. it's a pleasure yeah. to have you on the show. So for this is our first episode. So what an amazing uh, interview. And look, Matt, yeah. we'll talk again soon. Um, but yeah, I appreciate your time today. All right. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. And I feel like it's important that we all come together and discuss these things because we can help each other out, you know, even for the new guys out there listening. Just get a notepad before you start this thing. I guess we should have maybe said that at the beginning. We get a notepad and yes, go through yes. this video again and Watch take down yep. notes. You know, like it, it will help you for sure. It will help you and always educate yourself, you know, get better, faster, smarter, stronger, educate yourself. And like, that's, that's just all it is. Get educate yourself by doing it. Educate yourself by putting yourself out there. You'll learn pretty quickly too. Mm-hmm. Yep. You have to. So Matt, this was amazing. Uh, you know, just, I want you to know that you always have access to me as a friend or, you know, business, you know, partner or anything like that. So, um, with that said, uh, yeah, we're going to end it here. So, um, likewise, thank you, Simon. Thank you for having me. Thanks Matt. Have a good one. Bye.